Hey there, Solid Signal fans. I thought I'd talk a little bit today about amplifiers, what they are, what they are not, and why amplifier technology continues to evolve. Amplifiers themselves really didn't exist until the end of the 19th century. So you used to have these things called megaphones, which you know, you'd still see cheerleaders have today. And a megaphone makes it seem like it's amplifying, but it doesn't. See, an amplifier is something that makes more signal out of less signal. And a megaphone doesn't do that. What a megaphone does is it bounces all the signal until it's all moving in the same direction. So instead of dissipating in every direction, you get more sound going in one direction, the direction that you're in, and so it sounds louder. The guy who really was, for lack of a better term, the father of amplifiers was this guy, Lee DeForest. He sort of created the idea of the electrical amplifier by taking electricity and modifying it so that you could actually take a weak signal, turn it into a strong signal. He did this with something called an audion. Now, we've never really heard of an audion. People don't talk about them today. But you have talked about and learned about the devices that were created after the audion. The first was the vacuum tube. Now, vacuum tubes are used today in some musical instrument amplifiers or record players because they have a nice warm sound. But for a long time, vacuum tubes were the only way of not only amplifying electricity, but also controlling the flow of it through an electrical circuit for computing purposes. Vacuum tubes are big, they are clumsy, they break, and that's great if that's all you have because, hey, you know, it's better than nothing. Now, in the days that vacuum tubes were really big, you know, this was exciting because in the early days of radio, you just put on a little headphone and that headphone would let one person hear these extremely weak signals. With vacuum tube amplification, then you could have everybody hear exactly the same thing. Vacuum tubes gave way to transistors. Transistors are what are called solid state amplifiers. Instead of using glass tubes with lots of fine wires in them, they use semiconductors, which are minerals that allow for the precise flow of electricity. By using semiconductors, you can amplify or you can control the flow of electricity, again, for the purposes of creating computers. All computers today use integrated circuits, which are full of transistors. Transistors started out being about this big, and today they're so small that you'd need a, micro a magnifying glass. You'd need a magnifying glass to see a hundred of them. But let's get back to amplifiers for a second. The purpose of an amplifier is take a weak signal and turn it into a strong signal. But an amplifier isn't a magic wand. An amplifier can only amplify what's there, and it amplifies everything that's there. The signal, the noise, the background, everything. So if you start with a graphic like this, it's going to make it bigger, but it's not necessarily going to increase the quality of it. And that's an important thing to realize, because eventually amplifying over and over again is going to introduce little errors, we call these bits of error noise, that make it eventually so that there's no way that you can see what the original signal was like. And that's the overall limit of amplifiers. However, amplifiers sometimes use what's called digital signal processing. Digital signal processing is something that's been around for about 55, 60 years, but it's been very common in the last 10 to 15 years where a digital signal processor can actually understand what's there and then recreate a new strong signal. It's not only an amplifier, but it's as if I said, whispered something to somebody and they said it out loud, really loud. They understood what I was saying and they literally recreated it. That's where we're at, because digital signal processors can do a lot to take an extremely weak signal and turn it into something powerful, but even digital signal processors have their limitations. Again, starting with something like this, well, a digital signal processor might be able to turn it into something like this, but eventually 
that signal is going to be so weak and so noisy that there's nothing even the most amazing digital signal processor can do. Digital signal processors are used so that you can get these super weak signals on a relatively small antenna coming from 22,000 miles away and turn them into television. That's incredibly cool and it works incredibly well, but it does have limitations, at least until we see the next generation of antenna technology. And who knows what that's going to be. That's a little bit about amplifiers. If you want to know more, or if you want to purchase an amplifier for over-the-air, satellite, or any other sort of use, shop at Solid Signal for everything you need to get the best out of your digital life.